My name is Blaine and I have type 2 diabetes. My goal by the end of 2025 is to reverse my type 2 diabetes and as much of the associated insulin resistance as possible. And this YouTube channel is basically a means to help me document that process and open source and share that data that I've captured along the way. So data like my blood test results, um, meals that I've eaten, workouts that I've done, other body composition tests that I've done, um, and plans and protocols that I've implemented. And this particular video is about me sharing my blood test results from just before I started this journey, so May 21st, and then my most recent ones, um, July 3rd. So a bit between a month, uh, a bit over a month between those blood test results. Sharing those, that data, as well as the, the, the basic daily protocol that I have uh, implemented during that time. In the second blood test, um, there were only three biomarkers that were captured, the fasting insulin, fasting glucose, and the HOMA IR. So for this comparison, I'll just be comparing, I guess, between those three metrics. Uh, the first test included more metrics, um, but what I'll do in my next test, I'm planning on doing these blood tests every month. I'm going to do kind of more of a full panel so I can do compare and contrast more biomarkers. But for this particular one, it's comparing fasting glucose, fasting insulin, HOMA IR. And the TLDR is basically in May 21st, they were all in the bad range. And in the second test, they were all in the good range. With the fasting insulin being the biggest surprise for me personally, um, going from 17 to seven. So being on anything under 10 uh, is considered in the, in the healthier range. So to get that within one month was kind of blew my mind to be honest but before i kind of do go through those those numbers one by one i want to quickly share um, two things basically how i'm defining this journey of reversing type 2 diabetes and then also a little bit about my context so in terms of the definition i believe the formal definition of reversing type 2 diabetes is if you have and HB, HbA1c under six for three consecutive months or more without any medication. So that is, I guess, the formal target that I'm aiming for. I'm also tracking um, my fasting insulin and also my fasting glucose. So for me, I, that means with the three consecutive months as part of that definition, that means that I'll need to stop taking my metformin, which is the medication I'm currently taking. I'm taking 500 milligrams per day. Stopping that by the latest of October, which gives me October, November, December, giving me the three months. And then the, the goal is to maintain those good levels throughout that period of time. In terms of uh, the context of my story about how I got here, uh, I'm going to keep it fairly short. Maybe we can do a deep dive in the future, but Basically, I was diagnosed uh, about two years ago. It was a pretty big surprise to me. I've always played sport, always been relatively athletic. Um, so getting these symptoms, the primary symptoms for me were related to my head and how like my, my mental state. I was getting very dizzy. I felt like fainting all the time, um, even if I was just doing 500 steps. You know, I'd be walking to the shop across the road and... A couple of times I did that and I literally had to stop and go on the floor because I thought I was going to faint. Um, I'd be doing steps inside uh, my apartment and after a couple of hundred steps, I literally had to sit down, which was uh, just so foreign to me, um, that idea, because I had played sport all my life, running around all the time. Um, I the, the That kind of led to me doing some more testing, ultimately getting the blood work um, that indicated that I had type 2 diabetes. Since being diagnosed with that, I um, my girlfriend suggested I get a Dexcom, so continuous glucose monitor, which ended up being the best thing that I, I did um, during that time, approximately two years ago. I... It was simultaneously really helpful, but also super, super confronting. So it was helpful because I was able to, I guess, compare the symptoms that I had, the feelings that I was feeling with the actions that I took, my, my meals and how that affected my blood sugar, my 
um, exercise, how my exercise affected my blood sugar, and then basically seeing how that was reflected on on the graph on the Dexcom. So how that reflected on my actual um, glucose, uh, blood glucose levels. So I was seeing massive spikes above 14, 13.9, I think is the limit, millimoles per liter. So we need to do the conversion to the alternative one. I can put that on the screen. But then dropping really low to under 3.9 millimoles, which is the low thing. So it was that fluct like the rapid change from highs to lows. Uh, that first week that I was using it, my graph just looked like a um basically a roller coaster. And that made sense because I felt like I was going through a roller coaster. So it was, I guess, this validation that my my feelings, the, the things that I was feeling actually related to some sort of biological thing that was happening in my body. Um, that led to a lot of research, um, capturing data, running experiments. I Within about three months, I dropped um, a bunch of weight from 100 to 95 based on um, recommendation from my endocrinologist to get down to, I think, 100 kilos or something. He said, if, if I could get to around there, I'll feel a, a lot better. Um, I was 110 kilos at the time. I'm six foot three. So like these weight things obviously are relative to me. But I did find... Um, and that drop from 110 to 95, just to clarify, is is above the recommended amount of of loss per month or whatever. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but these this is just me sharing. I guess what I did. You need to do your own research and and consult with your health practitioners. But I felt a lot better. But that was a little bit of a trap because I felt a lot better after three months obviously not perfect. I was still feeling bad in a lot of ways, but a, a, a lot of the symptoms were alleviated to the point where I felt like I could relax a bit. So even though I was continued to implement more positive things into my lifestyle, I kind of did plateau a bit. Um, but then uh, fast forward to where I am now, I am wanting to do more of a conscious push to to fully reverse it is theoretically possible. So I need to give it one good go and um, document that process. So that's that's where we are today. Okay, so now to compare the two blood tests. So as mentioned, um, they all basically went from unhealthy to healthy ranges um, with the insulin being the, the biggest surprise. So we'll start with that. So the fasting insulin was 17 and it went down to seven. So the healthy range is under 10. So um, that was really positive. The best result in terms of my fasting insulin in the past three years for, from what from the records that I've managed to retain was 16. So going from the best of 16 in the past three years to seven was like crazy to me. I was super happy with it to the point where I, I almost didn't believe it. Fasting glucose was 7.1 on, on May the 21st, and then went down to 5.2. So again, from the unhealthy range to a good range. And then the HOMA IR went from 5 point something to, let me just quickly look, to, so went from 5.36 to 1.62. So anything under 2.5 is considered within the good range so the from memory the homa ir is your fasting glucose times your fasting insulin divided by 22.5 so as mentioned there are more metrics i need to track but this particular test um, that i did they only did the three um, these three metrics so but based on those three alone, I think that's given me a lot of motivation that um, you know we're moving in the right direction. To clarify the the daily protocol, so the daily protocol um, was three simple things, and to me felt um, realistic and and manageable. The first is ten thousand steps. That's to get the body moving, 
Uh, the second is a, less than 100 grams of carbs per day. The basic idea around that is if you're type 2 diabetic, you're insulin resistant. If you're insulin resistant, there's, there's a surplus of insulin in the system. Carbohydrates break down into glucose. That triggers the pancreas to release insulin into the system. So if I have too much insulin in the system, I want to introduce less of it into the system. And if glucose is a trigger in order to kind of um, trigger that release of insulin, then I want to, I guess, input less of it into my body. That's the rationale. So, but at the same time, this is my baseline protocol. So I'm wanting it to be realistic to the point where um, I can implement this on a day-to-day -day basis without, without it being too restrictive and allowing it to be a sustainable approach. So 100 grams was what I started with. Um, the third point is the basically 10 minutes of a muscle workout. So I've got like a little home gym here. So doing some deadlifts, doing some kettlebell work, basically using the muscles. Your muscles are a, you know, a big sink for, for glucose. Um, it's by working out the muscles, you know, you can get blood glucose from the bloodstream into the, into the muscle cells without any insulin being involved. It's an insulin independent pathway for glucose uptake into the cells, I believe. I don't, I'm not a biologist, human biologist, so I, I'm probably getting this, this terminology wrong, but something along those lines, you can do your own research. So the premise is basically trying to have more muscle mass in, in your body because that helps with the, the glucose regulation in, in the system. Other than that basic protocol, I didn't really do anything else in addition to that. I did some social sport, social netball Tuesdays and Thursdays, but other than that, I, I kind of don't really introduce any any other um, anything else or into that. It was basically trying to maintain that, and the the basic idea was base, basically I don't I wanted a, a baseline protocol. Uh, that I could implement in the first month that I could complete that month without quitting. Basically, I don't want to quit. Um, so I don't want to make it too hard for myself because this is a, a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and I wanted I wanted this this plan to be realistic and and attainable. Um, so yeah, but with that being said, uh, even though uh, the the Daily carb limit was 100 grams. I probably, on average, ate less than that. I, I need to actually crunch those numbers. Like some days I had 20 grams. Some many days I kind of was more in the 90 grams. Some of it was less. So I don't actually know what the average was, but I just know that for that entirety of that month, I consumed less than 100 grams per day. The plan for the remainder of this month is kind of two little things i haven't kind of hashed it out in crazy detail but generally what i'm wanting to do for this month is to eat the rainbow a day which basically just means eating a variety of fruit and vegetables and, and getting you know a diverse range of of vitamins and, and nutrients and minerals into my body from whole foods um, the main idea is just to challenge myself to try and get a balance between low carb while also eating these whole foods. Because you can, one way to go um, low carb is, is to be a carnivore and which is, that works for a lot of people. But I wanna, I guess, experiment with the possibility of being low carb um, while also eating these range of, of whole foods and kind of getting that feel and how that works for, for my body. The other thing I'm trying to introduce more this month is resistance training. So I'm trying to do four sessions per week of basically lifting heavy at the gym. Uh, and that is an extension of, I guess, the, the 10 minute uh, muscle workout. Um, that's part of my daily, daily protocol. So it's the same premise to that, building more muscle in my system, which helps to regulate that that glucose uh, in my system 
So that's the plan for this month. I'm going to do a blood test again at the end of the month and we'll do another video comparing those results and seeing what happened. The next one I'll, I'll include more biomarkers, hopefully. Um, and yeah, we'll see how that goes. But in summary, I think very happy with the progress from month one. Um, if you have any suggestions on biomarkers that you would like me to capture and share, let me know any tests you want me to, to do, any meals you'd like me to experiment with, these sorts of things, open to any of these ideas. Um, uh, let me know in the comments. I will go through and, and implement some of them. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and see you guys later.